Okay, so one minor point during the, the break, I've added the cancel button here, the bottom of this form, to close uh, the add form without uh, actually adding anything. That was simply adding a button with the on click function where we set, set open false uh, always in a callback, remember. Okay. Uh, Maybe just a word uh, about the difference between uh, on click and uh, on submit. I use both uh, events uh, in this um, in this form. On click is a um, is an event that can be added to any element uh, in the DOM, even links, uh, titles, uh, images, uh, and especially buttons, of course. Okay, and it will react when the user clicks on the button. Uh, the submit event is something which is more complex, which is at the level of the form, which is fired, which is fired when the form is submitted. And submitting a form may happen in different ways. For example, typing enter on the last item, on the last line, or clicking on the submit button, on any button which has a type submit, or an input which has type submit and so on. So there are many ways we can submit a form, and they all will generate one submit event at the form level. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's better to capture it uh, directly on the form instead of handling the different clicks uh, that may happen or not. By the way, I had uh, in, when, when creating this form, I also added some uh, validation attributes, like here. The score is required, uh, minimum value 18, maximum value 30, and so on or the label is required. And these attributes are validated at submission time. Okay, so uh, when, uh, if I try to add an exam without entering anything, the browser itself will uh, stop me and will not execute the submission action because there are some data which, is, which are not valid. So these are, very simple and free validation that comes inside directly, directly inside of the browser, thanks to some HTML attributes. Okay, and so this happens before. So my event tender is not even called in this case eh, because it will happen before the submit event. If the checks are passed, then the submit event is called. Hmm? If I had uh, uh, set an on-click event on this add button, these checks would would not have been done by the browser because it will just be a simple click, okay? So that's one reason to rely on the submit event because before uh, processing this event, uh, some validation is done if you are setting some attributes. It, of course, it doesn't uh, relieve you for doing your own checks in the code for the sanity of the variables, uh, but it's already something that, uh, uh, some basic uh, validation that uh, the browser is able to do by itself, just with attributes like this. These are not very nice error messages, uh, but uh, uh, okay, if, you, if I type something, then it will tell me that the second field is not uh, uh, full and so on. Mm. But let's not uh, wander from, uh, from today's call, from this, two, two, this hour's call, the edit. So uh, right now the edit button doesn't have any actions. We should make so that the edit button would display the form. Right now, so what, what do we have the controls, the displaying of the form? We have this editable, which actually is not really. Editable uh, decides whether to display or not the add exam form component. But then the form itself, uh, as the open state that controls it. So in a way, we have two different states, uh, one on the exam form and the other on the exam table that are, let's say, in competition <laughs> for, showing, for showing the form. What I would like to do is that the edit button would show and open the form in edit mode with some predefined values, okay? 
So editable doesn't play a role here because if editable was false, then we don't we wouldn't even see the actions. So the edit button would not be visible, would not be there. So we are sure that editable, editable is already true. So it doesn't play a role here. It's always true in this in these actions that we want to do. Uh, what we want to do is uh, show in the form uh, and tell in the form, okay, you, should, you are now in add mode, so behave like before, or we are now in edit mode, so let's open yourself uh, with these predefined values. So what we could do is to add a mode attribute to the form. And the mod could be add or edit. If add, it will behave like now. If edit, it would start open and maybe pre with some prefilled values. OK, how can we are inside exam table know uh, which value to pass to the, to the mod attribute? Mm. Uh, it doesn't know really because this mod should be determined by some actions that happen below. Is it something that we may compute starting from the current state and the current props? No. So we need some extra state. We need some extra state to tell me that I'm in edit mode. And this extra state, since I'm, I need to have this value here, this extra state must be in this component or above, not below. Okay? So let's put it here. Const form mod. Because mod is a bit generic. Set form mod. Is state initially would be add so this form mode state local state would be passed down as a mod property form mod to the exam form so that the exam form may know how to behave. And uh, uh, for example, the first thing you should do is that if the exam, if the form um, is in mode edit instead of add, it should start open instead of starting close. So we should not initialize this state uh, with false always, but depending on the mode. So if prop mode is uh, is by uh, edit props, it should start open. Otherwise, it should start closed. Okay. So add in add mode starts closed. In edit mode starts open. Okay, how do we uh, change this uh, mode uh, we should change this mode uh, by changing the state in the exam table but uh, using the button the edit button below so uh, we could uh, we should add a new callback called uh, maybe edit 
exam. Uh, hand, let's say handler let you exam. So it's clear that it's an event handler. That would at least for the moment set the form mode to edit. For the moment and who can call this function is the actions button so we should drill down this property into the uh, exam row component so let's call it handle edit exam And then inside the exam row, we have the exam actions, where we should also copy this property. Props dot. And finally, in the exam actions, the on click actions action on the edit button would finally call this function, call back braces props dot handle edit exam. So I need to pass three level down the event tender just to set the state uh, edit on the form. And if it's working, let's reload the application, I should be able to click on edit and this should open the form below. No, it does. Props and the edit exam is not a function because I, for, I always forget to save something. It's not working. Uh, so let's see, so let's reload the application, change, edit, no? What did they do wrong? So in the exam table, the state is edit. Okay, and in the, <coughs> so the state has been changed to edit. Let's reload the application. Exam table starts with the state add. The second state is add. If I click on edit, it becomes edit after a while. And why doesn't the form show, doesn't show? State false. Oh yes, because the form is already there. So I cannot change, so that's the same mistake as before. Let's go back. So what, what we try to do here is to initialize the open state from a property. Okay, so we're saying when the property is added, we must show the, the form. Uh, the problem is that uh, this expression is evaluated, is an initializer. So the initializer is evaluated when the at exam form is created for the first time. And when it's created for the first time, we still haven't pressed the edit button. And so the props.mod is still add. And therefore, it will initialize to false. When we change later the prop to edit, the prop will change to edit. Prop.mod will become edit, but the state will not be reinitialized. In fact, probably if I go to change and view again, so I'm recreating the component, it's, it's open right now. 
So this, of course, is a mistake because it creates some inconsistent state of, of the interface. Uh, we are relying on initializing the, the state uh, from the properties and when we need to change the properties later on, this change is not felt, is not uh, applied to the component. So this solution is not the best one. In edit mode, in edit mode, the uh, form will be shown, should be shown always, should be always shown. This is what we had in mind. In edit mode, always show the form. And from the point of view of the form, is not a state. It's an order from outside. If I am in edit mode, I don't check. I don't need to check the open state. I will behave as always open. It's easier when we think about it. We don't need to do that. Okay, let's do false. Because I only use in the open state, uh, only used uh, in add mode. Because in edit mode, I will override this. How? If not open and uh, props dot mod equal to add. If I am in add mode and my state is not open, display the button. If the mode is not add, go ahead and display the form. And this should work better, I hope. Change, edit, you see. And I display the form by acting simply on a property. The decision whether to display the form in the form uh, component is uh, derived from a state, which is on another component. The, the error I made was to try to replicate a state from an upper component to a lower component. And replicating on states creates synchronization problems. Depending on what you do with your application, it may become inconsistent or strange. Hmm? Um, right now, I don't like it very much because the opening state of this form depends partly on a property and partly on a state. Uh, maybe I would like to separate the, uh, so I, I cannot go back right now because I don't, so I need to reload. The problem is uh, that this button add is inside the same component. And so the state of this button will influence the component as a state. But the edit functionality is outside, so it will be a state from another component. Maybe it's better to move these two pieces of state up to a one single component and then instruct the form just with properties you should behave in this way. So you should, uh, uh, you know, um, concentrate the logical choices in just one component moving state up to a single component so the one idea could be to to break this component in two so the add state is not a good component add exam form is not a good component because it doesn't actually do what it says it says add exam form and actually it does two different kinds of jobs it, dis it decides whether to display the form with a button, and then it displays the form itself. So maybe we could move just this button and its related state up to one level, and we may have the form just for displaying the data. Uh, 
and that would make it easier because you wouldn't have any complex conditions like that, no? which are very difficult to manage and to read. So the idea is just to think uh, about the different uh, states in which the interface may be. So actually, we have uh, always try to think statically as snapshots. Okay, one state of the application is uh, where we are only showing the table. We called it view state. Okay. Then right now we have an edit state where a lot of stuff may happen. So we have one edit state where we are, we have the table and the buttons, edit and cancel, and the add button below there. So we are still viewing, but we have the control. Maybe call it edit. Okay, not edit, it's uh, change we call that, sorry. And it's a, a, a different visualization that we already have it. And then we have uh, the add mode. So in the add mode, we do have the, the grid. We do have the buttons. And we have the form with the new data to enter and the submit button here. And these are, it's our add mode. And of course, sorry, I forgot, uh, let's put it here, the button there for changing the view mode. Okay. So what do we want to, uh, by the way, even in this picture, there is something, if I focus on this picture, something that should decide. So, for example, if I click on add, am I allowed to click delete? The answer is yes, you are. In the middle of editing one and new exam, you may delete another one. Technically, this is what happened. The real question is, should I be allowed to click delete while I'm in the middle of adding some information? Maybe not. If you want to delete, let's first close the add form and then click on the delete button. So this is telling us, for example, that these buttons should be aware of the state of the interface. And if I am in add mode, they should be disabled. No? And so if I think at the interface as a whole, it's, it's easier to see how the different items may interact. And I may have another modality, which is, so these ones here should be disabled. While here, all of them are enabled. And uh, there is an edit functionality that I'm trying to implement, uh, again, which has all the grid, all the buttons which are disabled. I don't want to hide them because of the white the interface will no, wobble. Let's make them not clickable. And then I have the form, like before, with the items uh, and the add button, with the pre-initialized form. So this suggests that this inter our interface may be in four different states. So let's not break it down into a set of Boolean variables in different places. Let's select one component that will remember the state for the whole variations of this interface. And this mode may have these four values. And we may have explicit rules. For example, in view mode, we may go 
to edit mode, I am only using the initials, how? By clicking on the view button, uh, on the change button, sorry. I made it all wrong, sorry. It's not E, but it's change C. I'm clicking on the change button to go from the view to the change modality. And for going back, I can do that by clicking on the view button. So I know which components should be able to change the mode and how and when. Then going from change, uh, if I click on delete, what happens? Nothing, the interface doesn't change. Delete keeps uh, the interface status in the same way, in the second way, this change layout. Add, add will display the form. So if I'm clicking on the Add button, I will go to the A state, Add state, where this one. And in the Add state, these buttons will be disabled. And this one below will be enabled, the Cancel and Submit button. And the form will be shown and will be initialized with empty values. How do we go back from A to C? With the add or with the cancel? Can we go back from add to view? In the middle of an editing operation, are we allowed to click on the view button above and reset everything? Our choice. But right now the choice is explicit. We can see it. Before we were just, you no, know, it was happening from the code. Because we make too, many, too little decentralized decision. Right now we are, we are trying to centralize the behavior hmm, and design it. So, do we want it or not? Depends. Okay, it's a usability issue, it's not a technical issue. Right now it's working. If we need to prevent it, we should disable this button if we are not in the change. So, it's, it's a very bad arrow. So, it depends. And then the same goes with the edit functionality, which is very similar to add, but is being activated by the edit button and we, we, we may exit through a save action or a cancel and they both will go to C. So right now we are in the position saying, okay, we have one state variable the governing the state of this part of the interface. Where should it be, this state variable? In a location that can be transmitted to all the components that need it. They may decide which function to generate. And then we should isolate the form below just by um, by making it simpler, pulling the logic of the form outside of the form itself, putting it in the table component, okay? So in our components, I would uh, work in exam table, where we already have this, uh, we try to add this form mode, let's call it mode in general. It's not just the form mode, it's the mode for the whole information, for the whole interface. And so the initial value of this would be view. And we know that the, the legal values are view, change, add, edit.
and we try to decide what to display based on this. So also the editable is not needed anymore. The editable is, only, is just one no, uh, property that can be derived from this state. If we want to keep it, because maybe we have some code that is already using the editable variable, we just can compute it as a local variable from the state. So editable is no longer a state, it's just a derived value from the state. Editable equal as mod different from view. So the state is the inf main information, and then we can compute some variables that we can maybe makes our life easier if we want. And this toggle editable uh, something that should be changed uh, because we have a bigger logic. And so let's think about again. Edit control is the button okay the edit control was the button view or change i don't want to have a toggle editable uh, which is it's not really just a toggle so the edit control renders the button called view or the button called change So what it could do is a set mode view or set mode change. So it's easy in this case we could just uh, pass the set mode function to the edit control. Set mode is here, okay? In the state change fun um, function. So edit control when we click on uh, uh, what view it will props set mode to view and otherwise it will set mode sorry set mode to change Okay, I have something here. Let me remove something just to call for something simpler. Okay. Uh, so change. So right now we have the change com the exam table component uh, with a state which is view, and it doesn't change. Why doesn't it change? Because I didn't save the file. Hmm? Okay. So we we'll reproduce the behavior of this button by using the no, the mod variable instead of the editable boolean, and then we can go down the same way. We may create a table, the exam table, and the table knows uh, uh, exam table. We are here. Knows uh, whether it's editable or not. Editable is derived from the state. So but then the uh, add exam form will be uh, different. Because we need to do different things uh, according to the state. 
we may want to render the add button we may want to render the form in add mode we may want to render the form in edit mode so this part should be different so we could have for example if uh, um, mode equal to change then we can render the button and they take the button out of the form this part here copy and paste it here then if mode equal to add then I may have the form as before Okay, let's do this for the moment. Uh, but we need to import it. Uh, and the on click or the add button should not set uh, an open or not open Boolean, but should modify the mode. So if you set mode to add. What did I write it? Set mode. So Let's try to format it in a more readable way. So I'm using this conditional to render different subsets of the form, right? So let's see how it works. If I go to change. This is working by changing the state uh, variable becomes change become view if I click on add it will become add and then we render this form and will not render the add button anymore so also the logic for displaying itself uh, shouldn't be in the in this form anymore So the form component will become simpler, will only do the job of the form. The form component doesn't need uh, to handle its own opening state. Someone from outside will tell it whether to display or not, whether to be open or not. And so we can delete all this logic also. You see, it becomes simpler. If we are putting the information in the right place it's not easy to see but in the end it would only do its job behave as a form set open is not defined when I'm calling it uh, okay also here for example you have these two but the two buttons uh, cancel and uh, um, submit what should I do on cancel or what should I do on submit on cancel I should return to the change state so it not set open I could pass to this component also the um, set mode And the component, uh, instead of set open, we'll call just set mode to uh, change. Not set mode, but props dot set mode. So we are. F so again, I reload, I change, go to add, click on cancel we just close the form by the way it will destroy the form so the state will be lost if I go to add type something and then go to cancel if I add any again the, the form will be emptied okay
Um, okay, we wanted to disable these buttons when the add form is open, did we? Okay, it's easy because right now we just have to, we have one uh, inside the exam table. We have the exam row. The exam row, we just need to pass the mod property, of course, because the, it knows it, it needs to know it. And in the exam row, Again, also the exam actions need to know it. So exam actions, exam row, exam data, exam actions. I will pass it also the mod. Props.mod. And the exam actions will have these buttons uh, enabled or disabled. So I use the, may use the HTML disabled property is disabled if the mod is not changed, right? The only state in which I want to enable these buttons is when, is when I'm in the, in the seed state. In all the other states, uh, they should not be enabled, maybe. Hmm? I will check it, the diagram later. So if it, if, if it works, <clears throat> we should see that we are, the buttons are enabled here. I can delete. But when I click on Add, the button will fade out. They are lighter shade of color, and they cannot be clicked. If I cancel, they become active again. Good? So uh, let's check whether add is still working because we modified a lot of stuff. It does, at least uh, at first sight. The only thing it doesn't do is to close the, the form because we need to, when we add, uh, go back to change. Hmm? So I forgot to do that. Add exam form, blah, 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 props.set mod uh, change. Where is the browser here? Add, type something. Okay, and if we reopen the form, of course, it will be empty again. Because you see that the component here, uh, down, down below the add exam form is actually destroyed if we go, it not generated. So this, we, we are sure that the state is clear every time. Okay, so the final, well, now we are ready to implement the edit functionality. Should be easy, more or less. Clicking on edit will change the mode to edit and give the form information to render the initial state. Changing, changing the form to edit is easy because we just need to send the, uh, where am I, in exam table, send also the set mode below. So exam table as the set mode method. It should be given also to the exam row. Set mode equal to set mod and inside exam row 
I should pass also from exam row uh, to exam actions. Uh, set mod equal to props set mod. And finally, from the exam actions, the edit button will call let's say set mod prop set mod uh, edit so how is working you can click on edit Clicking on edit, change the state, but doesn't show the form. Why? Uh, ah, sorry, because it didn't add the, the lines that the form should also be added where the mod is added. So, change, go to edit, and it will open the form. Yeah? Which one, sorry? The edit and the add one, like not this one, the, the other layer. Here I'm creating, depending on the mod, I will create three different fragments uh, of, uh, of, uh, of DOM. Oh, okay. Either the button or the exam form with some parameter or the exam form with other parameters that then we need to, to, to sort out. Okay? So these are sort of if statements uh, all inside an expression. If uh, this condition is true, we render this. If the condition is false, we render that, and so on. Okay. So the logic whether to render in the add button or the full form is all here, and all depending on the mode variable. Right. Okay. So um, now the the form in edit mode is working. I should probably also tell it the mode mod equal to mod. And also above, because I need to change the wording on the buttons. So in the form, I should call the button add or save according to the mod. So if mod props dot mod equal to add, I will return add. Otherwise. Uh, save. Okay. So if I go, if you click on add, the button will tell add. If I click on edit, the button will say save. Okay. So the last part is uh, the, the hardest one is to initialize this form with the value corresponding to the, to the right row. Right now, it's empty. So we should call this exam form with the initial value to be edited. And the question is always the same. How can I know here which, are, which is the exam to be edited? And the only thing I can do here is to take this information from props or from state. Props don't have it. State doesn't have it. So I need a new state to be able to tell the exam form the initial values. And this state will be um, set by the edit button down below. So this state would be the edited line.
edit it exam, set edit it exam. Initially, we may have just an empty object. It will not be used unless we are in this mode and So in this case, uh, I will tell the exam form uh, edit equal to edit it exam or, or let, let's call it edit it exam so that we remember. The add form doesn't need this information. The edit form will need it. We'll need it to set the initial value of its, of its own state. Hmm? Um, let's go back. Who sets this value? The edit button. So the edit button should receive this function. Okay. Where is the edit button? Down below inside the exam row. And exam row needs to pass it to exam actions. And finally, exam actions may use this after setting the mode to exit and props.set mode, set edit exam to the current exam. Of the current row. The problem is that, okay, props.exam, I have it. I, I don't like this very much, but uh, let's make it work and then we can refactor it. So now the edit mode is changing the edit the, the interface to edit mode and the setting the state saying, okay, this is the exam that they want to edit. Let's see if it's working. Let me save this. Okay, so I go to edit. Uh, let's uh, check the state of the exam table. It's right now the second state is the should be the object. Okay. Click to edit on the second line. And this state will change to this second line. If I go back and cancel, the state will be remembered, but it's not being used. If I click on edit on another line, the state will change to the other value. Now I just need to use this value to initialize the form. Okay, I'm already passing the value to the form here as the edited exam and so in the form I should just set the initial value saying okay if props.mode equal to edit then use props.exam dot uh, what's the name of the property edited exam dot code otherwise use just the default code and I do that for all of them the initial value will be the code the name the score or the date And the data need to remember to form because it's a DJS. Or the default value that I had before. So let's reload everything. Change. I edit the first one. I see that the form is pre-populated with the value of the first one. 
I don't I can click on the other edits uh, because they are disabled I need to cancel edit the second one and I add the data from the second one and right now I need of course I just need to change the behavior of the save button because right now if I click on save it will add me another one and then uh, uh, JavaScript will um, be angry because I have two rows with the same key, of course. And uh, uh, everything will be broken down. But uh, right now, okay, everything is working from the interface point of view. It's only the logic that we need to improve. And uh, this is the method that needs to change. So uh, actually, the form at this point here should call a method, and this method should uh, uh, either uh, add or edit an exam. But the parameter is always exam. Okay, so we could uh, call it add or edit exam. Just to remember. And the method would be not at exam, but add or, or edit exam, add or edit exam. And then we will pass add exam, actually, or edit exam. That will, meet, will be another method, a different method. So the form will do its job. When I submit, it will just call a method. And this method will be at the add method or the edit method according to. So we don't give the logic to the form no? we keep the logic at the upper levels so we just need to have in the, right now we need to go to the app.js by adding a second edit exam prop and then of course we need to implement this functionality const edit exam will receive an exam as a parameter and uh, it should set exams, call the state set function with a new array with all the information equal except the line corresponding to the argument exam. So again, I'm mutating the state. It means that they should use a callback from the old state uh, exams uh, to the new state uh, where what, what I can do I could uh, use a map for mapping each element onto itself making a copy except the one that I need to change so it could be an exam exam.map and the parameter of the uh, map is a single exam and this single the return value of the map would be the same exam or the one that has been changed so the parameter the argument here so it would be whether e dot code equal to exam.code then exam, otherwise e. It's a very dense line. What are we trying to do? Okay, so set exams with a callback. Yes, is the old exam list. We take this old list, we create a new list with a map. And in this list, uh, for every element of this list, so the E are the old exams that we are using to build a new list. For each of the old exams, I'm checking whether the code of the old exam is exactly the same or code of the exam, which is, this one is coming from the form that the user just edited. If the code is equal, then we need to edit that exam, to replace it with the current content coming from the form. 
If the code is different, leave it away. So insert into the array the same old value, E. Okay, it may work. Let's check. So reload, just to start from a clean slate. Computer architectures, A, B, C, D, uh, whatever. And it's not 18, but 28. So let's try to save it. And it should change some information on the first row. Doesn't change anything else. Change the score. The average is recomputed. I'm sure that if we were working in a procedural uh, framework, uh, we should have for we, we will surely have forgotten to update the average. Okay, the good part of React is that uh, once you define some mechanism for turning state into, uh, into rendering, it will always work. Your focus is only updating the state according to the user actions. Okay, and so I go there. Okay, the, the problem is that if I change the code here, this logic, my logic doesn't work. Because if I change the code here, I click on save, uh, the map uh, will not find any match and it will not modify anything, okay? It doesn't make my, um, a lot of sense to do that. Uh, to support it, uh, we should have an extra identifier, which is not the code, okay? To be able to do the matching. In this case, the easy, the easy solution would be, so not add, but edit, would be to make this field uh, impossible to modify. So the user can modify everything except the code. For example, okay, this is one, one possible solution. And this is easy because in our form, we just have to disable this control, the exam code. So uh, we can make it disabled when and if mod is added. And so you see that in edit mode, this is not, cannot be modified by the user. Okay. So the functionality here is much richer, but we, we managed to make it, let's say, easy to understand. So the effort we, ma we must do is always try to think about the different variations, the different transitions, and then encoding all of this into state variables. Uh, and then also the, uh, some discipline with the event handlers in a way. So for example, there's one code I don't like uh, is this one here. Because I'm, I'm mixing information in a way, okay? Maybe it would be better since I'm modifying the state uh, from the parent, especially the set edited exam, probably would be better to have one single callback for these actions. So for example, here could have been remove exam or edit exam with the information about the exam. And then all the logic about the set mode and set edit exam and so on would be in the upper component. Will be much cleaner. Like we are doing for the for the add and edit. You know? All the information, the, the owner of exams is up. All the methods for modifying exams are inside up. And then I'm just passing the method down and, and to the component that I want to enable changing or modifying the state. Okay. Uh, in exam row, we could do the same here. So instead of passing down set mode and set edit exam that are how we implement the state, uh, we could just uh, say, okay, um, I call back when you need to remove an exam and another call back when you need to edit an exam. Okay, so if I do that, 
would be just something like props dot edit exam which one props dot exam and that will be much cleaner and then of course I need to implement uh, this edit exam on the exam table itself like I have uh, where is that uh, sorry I need to go two levels up so instead of having all of this I just have an edit exam But this is not needed anymore. So we have a remove exam. Uh, it's a bit, it's cleaner. The exam is the item, the mod, and then we have the remo remove action and the edit action that come from the table. So remove exam and edit exam come from above. Remove exams is coming from up below. Uh, up above, so the the the, the up, and uh, but edit exam, uh, edit exam. No, sorry, should come from here, and this can be implemented here. Const edit exam, where. I need only to, uh, I receive an exam, I need to change the state in set the mode to edit and set uh, edited to exam. Now it's cleaner because right now my component is managing my state. If it's something so simple as changing the mode, okay, it can go down. But if it's something that needs, requires a bit more logic, uh, it's better to have a callback in the same component where the state is located, and then give the various buttons or interface elements just a callback uh, to execute the function. So if, if it's true, it should work in the same way. But now the, the, the buttons are simple because they don't have any logic inside. You see the logic for the buttons here is just, uh, okay, if I'm clicking on view, set mode view, if I click on change, set, no, sorry, this is the other one, sorry, is the uh, XM row. If I click on delete, uh, call remove exam, if I click on uh, edit, uh, Call edit exam. That's it. What happens depends on the upper component, on the owner of the state that knows how to modify the state. Uh, we spend the morning refactoring. So every time we wanted to add a new functionality, we had to move something, to change something, and, uh, and to find the best place for some functionality. And this is normal because when we are adding, when we are expanding the functionality, something that was initially involving only one component now involves two or more components and we need to move the state up and we need to pass the, the, the event handlers down, also the, the handlers functions down. And let's try to keep, uh, keep everything under control, understanding everything where it should be, okay? Uh, Component uh, as a state, uh, if that state is needed by its children and by itself, and possibly and concentrate all the methods for handling this component into the, comp the state, sorry, into that component. The form still has a state, okay? But this state is stupid, it's just for managing the form itself. Uh, all the event tender here. 
So every component manages its own state. We have three levels of state right now. The application state, the list of exams, the interface state, mod, and the associated helper, helper variables, and the form state. They don't interact so much with each other. And there is never true that one value is the copy of another or ma must keep track of, of another. So they, they are independent, hmm? minimal and independent. This is our target concerning the state uh, um, design. Okay. Um, one final mention I would do about, uh, um, sorry, two mentions. One is uh, concerning this code here. You might prefer writing an if statement because ternary statements are not very easy to read. Okay? Uh, the bad news is that you can't. Uh, hooks, uh, like use states, you remember, are the function that, uh, in, in a way, escape from the pure and functional behavior of, the fu of, the, of um, JavaScript components. And so there is a rule for these hooks to work uh, that hooks should always be called at the top level of a function. So they cannot be inside a for, they cannot be inside an if, they cannot be inside a while, a switch, or on, on anything else. So the definition of the hooks should be always you know, at the top level of the component. Uh, if we want to understand why, that's because uh, uh, these functions uh, store some extra information inside the function definition itself. So that when you call this, the function the second time, it knows where to retrieve the, the old information. But in order to retrieve the old information, they should be stored in the same order. Otherwise, no, they're mixing uh, uh, retrieving information for the, 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 they have some slots. One, you see in, also in the inspector, the state is not given by name, it's given by number, one, two, three. The first time you call your state, the second time you call your state, will store these values. And so they, we must ensure that the use states are always called in the, in the same order, and the only way to be syntactically sure of that is that you cannot put them inside an if or a for. They should be, they must be at the top level. So that requires us to do some sort of trick. Of course, you can pre-compute this outside uh, in a, you can do an if here to compute this uh, value and then set the value. Mm -hmm. But you cannot put the use state into an if statement. Mm -hmm. The second uh, point I wanted to ma briefly mention is that in this code, we don't have any problems with the initialization. Because uh, at the end of all the work, we are destroying and recreating the form every time. And so there is never the case in which these values are remembered from, from before. Okay? Actually, this resetting is not even needed. Because when we submit, we close the form, and if you click on that, it will be recreated again. So the problem that we had before, that the old values were remembered, uh, in this case, is not... Uh, doesn't happen Im anymore. Why? Because we are recreating the form every time. When we don't need it anymore, changing the mode will just uh, you know, remove it from the DOM, and so we'll, be, we'll, lose, we'll lose, we'll forget the state. So it's not a problem. There may be some cases uh, when you want to do it. For example, if I click on edit here, and I wanted to click on, now it's disabled. And it's, it's good, it's a good thing. But if I want to click on the second edit here and have this value update, how can I do it? Uh, in imagine a, a list of items and the details of, the, of each of them. You click on, a, on an item and you want to see the detail which is updated. So very similar to this one. You click on the button, you may change the state uh, which is called the uh, edited uh, exam, but the form will not change. Uh, if I, after the form is open, if I change the state here, 
the form will not update uh, until we destroy and recreate it but it's not what, it, what we want we want just to update it okay so is there a way the question is this one is there a way to tell a component to re-render itself from scratch to reinitialize itself because we have new data to, to tell it the answer number one is yes destroy and recreate it and some number two is uh, change the key. This is something new. It's explained very well in this example here. Uh, yeah, preserving a resetting state. And it's telling you that if you are a comp where is the option? Okay. It's at the end. Okay, this one. We're setting a state with a key. So when you need to explicitly tell a component, uh, reset your state, you can change, you can give a key property to the component. Normally key is used only when we are rendering lists, remember, okay? to allow React to recognize whether the same item has been added or moved or whatever. Key may also be added to any component, and if that value, key, changed, the uh, React will, let's say, reinitialize the component itself. So a way to let a component reinitialize the state is to change the value of its key attribute. So in this case, in our case, we would, we, we could just simply have, uh, sorry, where's the, clicking on this will change the key of this form to the new code, for example, to a value that is guaranteed to be different from the value that we had before. And so changing the key will reset the state. It will be equivalent to destroying and recreating the component and may be useful in some cases. And it's the simplest way instead of forcing a, a destruction of the component uh, by adding an intermediate state, which is complex, okay? So if you have some this master of detail view, just remember this. Okay, today we had to also to talk about the context, but it's an easy part, uh, we'll uh, insert it in, uh, next week. Uh, for today, it was important for me to understand very well how to handle the state, okay? Thanks for everything.